A couple of weeks ago, I was inspired by an old LTT video to try and make my own portable Bluetooth speaker. They use some 2 inch full range dates and audio drivers and 1 inch tweeters, along with an inexpensive Bluetooth amplifier module. They set themselves a goal of beating the $180 price tag that the LG X Boom Go PL7 carried at the time. They came up with a pretty cool design, it had some quirks but overall it performed reasonably well. They did however blow out quite spectacularly on the budget when they included their labour costs, so I thought I'd give this type of project a try and see what I could come up with. I started off by scouring the internet for hardware and some design inspiration. I settled on using some 2.5 inch full range data and audio PC68-4 drivers, which would be powered by a ZK502T Bluetooth amplifier. I felt that the slightly larger 2.5 inch drivers would provide a bit more bass than the 2 inch ones they used, and I didn't want to go down the path of including tweeters and a sub, as this would increase the size and cost quite substantially. I also liked that the amplifier had bass and treble controls, so there was some opportunity to make adjustments to the sound to suit the final speaker enclosure design. I primarily use a Bluetooth speaker in a fixed spot in my workshop or home office, so I don't need it to be battery powered, although this would be nice for portability. Rather than include a battery pack within the speaker design, I opted for a 12 volt inline UPS that I could use to provide portable power to the speaker if I needed it. With the hardware selected, it was time to start working on the speaker enclosure design. I started off looking at different ported speaker designs, but was eventually drawn to the visual appeal and experimental nature of transmission line speakers, and this was a rabbit hole if ever I've seen one. It turns out that the best way to design a transmission line speaker is to follow a pretty rough design guideline and then do a lot of trial and error adjustments until it sounds good. To start you need to use your speaker's free air resonant frequency to calculate the corresponding wavelength. My speaker's resonant frequency is 117.1 Hz, so the corresponding wavelength is 2.29 meters. We then need to divide this by 4 to get our recommended transmission line length, so that's 732 millimeters. So we essentially now need to design a housing with a 732 millimeter path from the back of the speaker to the front of the housing. The easiest way to do this is by creating a labyrinth, or a path that crosses back and forth a number of times within the enclosure. So I sat down with Fusion 360 and spent a few hours designing an enclosure to house the drivers, provide a 732mm path from the back of the speaker to the front again, and to house the amplifier. And this is the design I came up with. The main internal parts of the speakers, the amplifier housing and the handle would be 3D printed, and I'd then use some laser cut acrylic panels as covers to box them up. I like this layout for a couple of reasons. It leaves the transmission line design visible, which I thought looked quite cool, but it also allows the sides to be opened up to add or remove damping material to get the sound right. Another neat feature of this design is that the amplifier can be swapped out for a different model, or the speaker size can be changed without having to redesign the whole enclosure again. You can just redesign a new amplifier housing to drop in, or scale the speaker enclosure to fit the new driver size. Next came a lot of 3D printing. Each housing took around 36 hours to 3D print. And we had a couple of cold nights at the same time, causing the prints to fail by lifting at the corners but I eventually got the four components made up. I then laser cut the side panels from 3mm clear acrylic. 3mm acrylic sheets are one of the most popular thicknesses, so you could easily replace the sides with other transparent or opaque colours, or even use matte black sheets if you don't want them to stand out. With all of the components made up, we can now start assembling the speaker. To start off, we need to melt some M3 brass standoffs into the 3D printed parts. I did this because I figured I'd be taking the side panels off quite often when experimenting with the sound, and they need to be held in place quite tightly so that they don't vibrate. I didn't think plain 3D printed holes could handle this. The inserts are just melted into place using a soldering iron that's set above the melting temperature of the 3D printing filament.
Next, let's install our amplifier into the housing using the included standoffs. It looks like my hole measurements were off for this, so the front standoffs don't align with the holes, but the back two hold it in place well enough. Before installing the drivers, I'm going to solder some two core wire onto them to run to the amplifier. The drivers are then held in place with some M3 by 8mm screws. The inner side panels can then be installed on the housings, again using some more M3 by 8mm screws. Now we can mount the amplifier housing between the two speakers. For this I'm going to use slightly longer M3 by 12mm screws. We can then install the handle on top of the speaker to provide some additional support. This is a bit tricky to get the screws into from the inside of the housing, but you can get a hex key into the space to tighten them. I used M3 by 8mm screws for these as well. I'm going to turn the ends of the speaker wires to screw into the terminals. Now let's hook up our speaker drivers to the speaker outputs on the amplifier. These just hook up to positive and negative in the same way that they're connected to each driver. Finally, we can close up the remaining covers. I really like how the engraving has come out on the amplifier's cover. I'm going to throw some soft fabric into the bottom of the speaker enclosures as a starting point. You need to do some experimentation with different size materials to try and eliminate as much of the higher frequencies as possible. So this will likely need to be revisited a number of times, but it should be fine as a starting point. To finish it off, I'm going to screw 8 rubber feet onto it so it doesn't vibrate on the surface that it's placed on. These are also held in place with some M3 by 8mm screws. Then we can press the included silver knobs onto the amplifier controls. And that's our speaker complete. All that's left to do is to plug it in and try it out. I have to admit, I didn't have high hopes for this project when I started it. I've got very little experience with audio projects, and everything I've done here is based on a few hours of googling, but I'm actually quite impressed with the final product. There's definitely some room for improvement, and I'll play around with different materials within the speaker as well, but I'm really happy with this as a starting point. It's obviously difficult to convey the true sound of a speaker over a video, but this gives you some idea of what it sounds like and what its limitations are. To make it portable, we just need to put the UPS in line with the power supply for an hour or so to charge, and we can then unplug the power cable to use it. The controls on the amplifier are great for tuning it to the type of music you listen to and your listening preferences.
As for the cost, the drivers and amplifier cost me $50, the UPS was another $35 for portability, and the filaments, screws, inserts, feet and acrylic cost me about another $25. So all up, the hardware cost of the speaker was around $110. In terms of time, it took me about 30 hours in total to research, design and build the speaker. So even at minimum wage here in Australia, that's another $450. So if you've got time on your hands, $110 for the hardware is quite good value for money. But you can definitely get something a lot better than what I've built if you value your time. Let me know what you think of my speaker design in the comment section below. I feel like I might look at adding a bass driver to the void in the middle of the speaker as an optional add-on. So let me know if you've got any suggestions for that. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.